Okay, welcome. This is the hypothesis testing chapter 11 of our interesting learning statistics with our this club. So, uh, this chapter we are going to talk about what is hypothesis testing, how to test the hypothesis, and how to evaluate them. So, evaluate the results of a statistical hypothesis. So what is uh, a what is testing? A what is testing is a statistical method which is used to determine if there's enough evidence in a, in a sample of data to draw conclusions about a certain population. So basically, this type of test helps you to make informed decisions about whether a specific assumption uh, or a claim about a population is likely to be true or not. Basically, it involves setting up two competing statements, such as uh, the null hypothesis, H0, and the alternative hypothesis, H0. And then collecting and analyzing the data to see which statement is more likely to be supported by evidence. And how, what, what is this evidence? So this set of measures that we help us to identify if this evidence is supported. So how to set the hypothesis? So as I said, we have population and something after to do this statistics. And so we make an hypothesis if something is happened uh, or not, or if this thing that happened is within a certain range. Uh, and the, our first hypothesis is our new label, H0. So we, it is our starting point, our status quo. So the default assumption. Okay, where um, um, the alternative hypothesis, HA, is the opposite. The new hypothesis doesn't verify. It would be an alternative hypothesis. So this is the the syntax usually you uh, graph the two hypotheses uh, and set one one to H zero as the new hypothesis and H eight as the alternative hypothesis. Each of the two. This is like a stress what you do when you were when you try to answer a research question. And so um, you set a uh, these two hypotheses as well as a threshold. So that this threshold is a, a percentage, which as you know percentage ranges between zero and one, so between zero and hundred percent, okay, that something Will verify. And so this um, 0 0.5 uh, is a threshold, which is usually um, set to 0 0.05. To be honest, this is much of the cost of 50%. Uh, but, but you can set it whatever you like. Mostly uh, there is a, a threshold uh, which is says. Uh, in ranges of five percent, which you basically identify the most of your uh, probability, um, which is the ninety-five percent, uh, and that that is what is usually happen. But what you want to identify is are the extreme, uh, so the chaos of the, of the, uh, uh, your uh, distribution uh, and those uh, will be uh, within five uh, percent. And so, as you can see, so this is a five percent, and this is a in this case when we do um, say that, that alpha is less or equal than a certain value, which is this is five percent. Okay. Uh, and 
update on the, the new hypothesis and uh, the alternative hypothesis would be the opposite, which is greater than uh, uh, the, the same value. Uh, in this case, we have a one-sided set. This is uh, because uh, we are considering uh, our new hypothesis, which, which is uh, less or equal than 5%. So all that happens on the um, left side of our uh, distribution, uh, while the opposite would be uh, all that happens uh, on the the other side, that would be the, the, the part that is greater than 5%. Usually, it's considered or 5% or 1%. So all that happens between details of a um, the, uh, probability distribution of values that uh, are the corresponding uh, um, outcome values of certain uh, effects. And so here again, uh, I've already <laughs> again uh, said no point 0.5, but it, it is no point no 0.5, so 5%. So I set, um, um, this is a one-sided set, but I can um, uh, run my, um, I thought, uh, so, uh, to answer my research question with a two sided set. So, in this case, I set my new hypothesis with a threshold of alpha uh, to be equal than 5%, or uh, not than 5%. So, in this case, we are talking about two sided sets, which means that if it um, equal to 5%, uh, it's a specified value. Uh, while if it's different to uh, uh, 5%, it, this would be distributed within the two uh, tails of your uh, probability distribution. And so um, that would be a little bit clear with a case study. So, for example, we use the student age, okay, and we suppose uh, we have a two sided set, and so we suppose we want to test if the average age of a sample student is different from a population average age, which is said to be like 165 centimeters. Okay, so our new hypothesis would be that. Average age of the student is 165 centimeters, so the average age of the student. And so we want to test this uh, this uh, hypothesis against an alternative hypothesis, which is that the average age of the student is not equal to 165 centimeters. So this is our uh, two sided test. Uh, uh, and um, so this is our, our very basic um, observation distribution. Uh, and so we have uh, a certain number of students and they age. We set a significant level to be 5%. So instead of alpha, to be 0.05. Common values are said uh, other common values to be 1%. And we perform an hypothesis test. So we use a t test statistic for this uh, function. For example, this is a, a very, very simple example to, to show what a, an hypothesis test is. So uh, we put the distribution of uh, our uh, observation value, and then uh, in this case, we uh, New uh, we, running this uh, the, this function, we, we have some results. This this function will be uh, a p-value. 
So this key value is basically um, a percentage that is um, uh, telling us that on average, our um, uh, null hypothesis is um, it, it, it says enough evidence, or there is not enough evidence uh, um, that in this case uh, the average age is um, different um, from uh, our mean value, uh, or uh, or not. And um, so the, the key value is not exactly the probability that this would be okay um, is actually equal or 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 not to to the mean, but it's uh, basically telling us that we are within a certain range of probability. Uh, that let us to evaluate this value to be accepted or rejected. So in this case, for example, the value that we are, uh, the result of, the, uh, of our test in this uh, uh, distribution of uh, observations tell us that we need to, we fail to reject the new hypothesis. So that means that there is not enough evidence to suggest that average age is different from its average value. Fail to reject means that um, we not so um, we haven't uh, completely so firmly rejected the new hypothesis. Okay, but there is not enough evidence to accept it. And so, but as well, there is not enough evidence to reject it. So we fail to reject our new level. And this is the one we are going to talk about this, a type of error uh, that um, are usually uh, take into, take, uh, taken into account uh, when uh, to uh, identify, making a good decision, uh, evaluating the results of an hypothesis. And so when we evaluate the results of a statistical hypothesis session, uh, we commit, we can commit two errors, a type of one error or a type two error. And this is when, um, so our new hypothesis is result as true. So we are within our range, our threshold. But um, in reality, in, uh, effectively, the new hypothesis is not true. So we, sh we, we should rejecting the hypothesis, we do not reject the hypothesis, and we commit error. Um, so, H0 is true, and this is um, uh, our result of the testing. In fact, the H0 is true, we accept the, the new hypothesis, and we make a correct decision, we can make a error. While if the age, uh, our new hypothesis is false, we commit such one error. Uh, conversely, if uh, our new hypothesis is false, so our test, the first result as, uh, uh, that we should uh, reject the new hypothesis when in fact this uh, H zero is false. Um, uh, 
we make a correct decision. While if it is, uh, it is not, we can make a type to error. So all those things I find um, uh, difficult path to uh, come out. But as well as before, we go through um, a case study, uh, a very uh, simple basic example to get into the meaning of the process. So suppose we have a new medical test, uh, and this is to detect a particular disease, and we want to assess if its accuracy. So we want to see if this test performs well, so catches the uh, disease or not. So our new hypothesis is the patient does not have a disease. The alternative is the patient has the disease. So we simulate uh, the test results in two groups. So we have patients without the disease. We have some patients with the disease. We perform an hypothesis testing based on the test results and evaluate what are the type 1 and the type 2 errors. So as we are simulating data, we set the seed, and then we simulate um, simulation without the disease with a probability 10%, population with the disease with a probability of 80%. And then we set a threshold. So we have a type 1 error with a threshold of alpha of 5%. And we have a type 2 error with a threshold theta of 20%. Okay. So again, what we do is um, testing. Yes, in this case, to, you, you need to uh, simulate more than one time. Okay, so we uh, we simulate uh, the same thing as we did before, but this time uh, the probability is alpha, uh, as well as the probability probability is 1 minus 1. Theta is basically, uh, so al uh, 1 minus theta is basically alpha. Okay, so this is, if you have the disease, or if, so our hypothesis are that if the disease does not, does not have the disease, does have that have the disease. So it's a two sided test. So uh, we consider uh, this to be um, simulated uh, on one minus the population without the disease, while this other is time the population. We run a few tests on the test of the disease and the test of the disease. And again, in this, uh, what do you uh, like to identify and the, the, the that one that uh, you need to uh, set it to cut off? Okay, to set the cut off, we use the two norm function, one minus alpha. Uh, which uh, automatically uh, I like if you are um, within a, a, or uh, outside the physical body. Okay. So um, as I said uh, here, uh, the, type, the type 1 error is basically uh, we have true positive um, patients. So these are, uh, this is um, basically telling us that these are the two sets. So our test, uh, um, so our new level is true, and um, it, in fact, it is true. So uh, 
was a guest of right. And so uh, we, we are uh, in a position to, to identify through posture. So patients with disease that are correctly identified. And what are they? So they are the sum of the test results we produce, which is equal to one. The false positives are the patients without the disease, which are incorrectly identified as having the disease. And so these are the, the sum of uh, uh, all the test results without the disease. While the true negative are the patients without the disease correctly identified as not having the disease. True negative, so we have true positive, true negative. Uh, false positive and false negative. False negative are the patients with the disease which are incorrectly identified as not having the disease. Okay, and so this is uh, uh, positive is one. Negative is zero. If we put them, um, uh, uh, look at them in a on a proportion. Okay, so we have false positive divided by the sum of false positive and true negative, and the false negative divided by the sum of false negative and true positive. We have a start one error and a start error. So in this case, if we extrapolate our result with our single value, then we jump to R and we have a look. We can see that the type one error or the false positive case is four percent. While the uh, type two error or false negative case is 38, 37%. So what is it? We, we can conclude that the interpretation of the results based on whether the p-value is less than your chosen significance level alpha will make you conclude if there's enough evidence to support the evidence or not. Then, in addition to these two types of errors, they represent the percentage of the population who were correctly or incorrectly identified answering this question. And the specific values of type 1 and type 2 errors vary based on the population. But by adjusting the parameters, you can explore different scenarios such as uh, testing the sensitivity with one minus beta, or the specificity with one minus that one and two. Um, looking at this, you have the effect on the error rate. Furthermore, the chapter ends with um, uh, touching two distinct statistical approaches to a data spectrum, which is the human and the Fisher approach. The human approach is the one which emphasizes controlling type 1 error and facilitating binary decision while optimizing the test power. Okay, we haven't mentioned much about the test power, which is the beta. So the type to error. And when you simulate your data, then you can basically adjust the result of this power in a way that you might want to simulate more data to uh, analyze the result. And the Fisher approach, which prioritizes assessing the strength of evidence against the new hypothesis. And it often employs p values and confidence intervals without controlling type 1 error. So, researchers select the most suitable approach based 
on their like, objectives and priorities, often incorporating both perspectives when conclude, uh, conducting an inception of a uh, Let me jump into one. I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, not really, it's not clear. Okay, so I'd like to get this um, little data about performing um, looking at patients with the disease of patients, uh, without the disease of patients, with the disease of patients. So um, it takes at the seed and then uh, Simulate uh, this situation through this is target zero for my disease, one for action. Okay. So, this is our okay. Um, we have um, a list and um, magic of zero and one. This would be the the testing uh, probability, uh, as well as relationship between uh, with uh, another probability. Okay. Um, we assume that step one error alpha is the five percent, while the step two error theta is ten percent. This one here is used to control the power of your test. Uh, and this is done through uh, simulation. Okay. So I um, uh, now set the threshold for both of the without and with the injection. And simulate again. This is a so in yeah. in this context, the the threshold we set for uh, getting the errors. Mm, Is going to give us the power of the test, or what? I I have the about what is the test power or power of the test? Yeah. Um, the uh, the simulation. Okay, we are basically simulating a, a random scenario. Okay, with a certain probability. Yep. Uh, and then multiply. So this is a, again um, a, 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 a matrix of zero one, where we basically are considering people. Uh, are considering uh, patients with no disease and patients with disease. So uh, we have simulated thousand individuals. Uh, probability this alpha is our cutoff. So that means that mm -hmm. uh, five percent. This it's a bit confusing uh, somehow, uh, but. Uh, in this case, 5% of our population has the disease. Mm -hmm. While in this case, 1 minus theta, which is the 80%, mm -hmm. uh, so 1 for disease is 0 for the disease. 
in this case, 1 minus theta, so 80%. As we've got to the as we as we as we got to the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It should be. Uh, um, and so I, uh, in fact, this is the the um simulation of a thousand uh, patients with uh, probability of eight percent. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I, I am, I'm, 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 what I'm doing here is basically simulating a, a larger sample, following the same um, parameter, the same, the same uh, approach, the different parameter. Mm -hmm. And then apply this to a T test, which is mm -hmm. uh, the function that we do. And perform T uh, sample T test. So I include uh, X and Y. Which is a net vector value. And I can run the test on one sample or on two samples. In this case, I'm, uh, uh, I am testing two samples one with the Z and one without the Z. And these are two matrix. Matrices with um, values of 0 and 1, 1 for disease, 0 for cancer. So, this is the test mm -hmm. result with disease. So, uh, as I have uh, COVID, I go to test uh, if I have, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling I'm, I'm feeling unwell. I go to uh, check whether I have COVID or not, and I do a test. My test results that I have COVID, so I am positive, and uh, but I, my the test can be. Right or wrong? So my the, the test result uh, results with I am positive with COVID or I am not. Uh, I haven't got COVID, and mm -hmm. this is the same with the, without the disease. Uh, Based on uh, on the proportion that I have provided, this is a previous that I have provided. Uh, in this case, uh, I advertised that my uh, testing level of error for my test, which is twenty percent. And so the result of my t test what says that the, the, the value is um, less than uh, 0.5. And so I mm -hmm. expect the level. That means that uh, is a 
and this is the conclusion uh, of the Python of the Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I can count how many uh, this is the test possibly to think. Okay, and so I know that I sign one when someone asks to think. And mm -hmm. I, I want to count how many tests without the cost. And so this this would be my true positive value. And right. if I the test without disease, this is a false positive because if I have disease, the one is when I have disease. Okay. If my test results without disease, it's equals one. And this is a false positive. Then I count how many false positives I have. And so I can uh, judge this test, uh, this type of test, uh, counting uh, how many true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative. Uh, This is to be uh, a way to consider the specificity, the sensitivity, the way to calculate the sensitivity and the specificity. And so right. um, right. and how can I calculate um false positive? Divided by the sum of false positive by true negative. So my type one error is four percent, and my type two error is thirty five. And um, so I can uh, basically conclude that my false positive right. rate is quite low, and my false negative rate is quite uh, low. The power means the percentage of people, including the percentage of people having the disease, in this case, in such quantity, percentage. I, I need to adjust this value, uh, simulate this again. This, this, this part is uh, uh, the, the most uh, tricky one, and uh, as well as with the the mention of this two, um, oh, not much of the chapter. Um, this is um, but yeah, I I think so far, uh, everything is clear. Just to mm, you mentioned the power of the hypothesis test. Power of the hypothesis. In fact, in fact, the power of the, of the hypothesis test is basically let you, uh, you need to, uh, you cannot do it on one sample. You need to do a simulation of your sample The then at that point you cannot use this is not mentioned 
at that point, you cannot give a simple key value, but you need to give an adjusted key value, which is now called a Q value. I, I didn't follow this uh, here, but I just wanted to mention the fact that um, when you um, uh, want to uh, so if you ever look at the uh, how a test is performed, you look at how many times you get it right. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, this is a two-sided test. So again, yes or not. Okay. So you get your second value if the the names are equal to each other. If they have, for example, they have the same name or they have different. So that it, it doesn't cover um, uh, so. In this case that we are talking about two sided test, we are looking at uh, in particular on this example, we are looking at uh, uh, considering the accuracy of a test, calculating the sensitivity and the specificity of the test. And how do we do that? Uh, it starts to an error, we have to add this I D false positive, uh, false negative. Two positive and two negative. Uh, maybe the only thing that uh, makes confusion here is the simulation of the data, because we are just uh, considering zero and one. But no, I think it's 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 clear. It's The hypothesis testing is yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, at the end of the chapter, chapter uh, made in uh, comparison with the patient um, have a test. Uh, and so, which is completely, uh, in some sense, uh, so here um, there is a uh, consideration of how many times something uh, happened, uh, and there is no other uh, external event that are considered uh, getting the meaning of this one. Okay, you are just running the test on, on some uh, observation that you provide, uh, and basically the test counts how many times that thing would happen within a certain range. While a Bayesian mm -hmm. approach is a probabilistic approach, and so it considers uh, um, not only how many times something happened, but how many how many times that thing happened, um, uh, conditioned to under under other. But I would think that that specified thing happened, uh, and um, it is a so, uh, so, uh, a little connection can be made thinking about the power uh, and the testing. So when you simulate your data many times, and then you pass from a key value to a Q value. And there is something that is closer to a patient approach because so the the, the there is a, this this uh, difference between the frequency and the the patient. Uh, the frequencies are counting how many times something happened based on uh, so they are possible cases and all upper and the in a particular uh, population, uh, while the Bayesian approach consider uh, that something is basically uh, uh, linked to something else to happen. So it's conditioned uh, 
to the so it, it, it's not just counting the number of times something happened, but the thing happened because of something that happened. So you need mm -hmm. to add and uh, it, it is a completely different approach. Um, and so this is uh, the, the chapter that we talk a lot of personal uh, research questions. Uh, and it depends about the history of everybody's discussion and the stress of other discussion. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but what well, that well, uh, we saw here, uh, it's clear. Um, yeah, but I think the book is giving just like a, a short introduction for each topic. I think. What is your your experience and uh, about the discussion? Sorry. What what type of experience? Um, very few indeed. Yeah. Let me think. Uh, so far, I mean. It's so so far for my research. I have been doing uh, a kind of similar approach. I I I mean I use um, a formula. I mean what what yeah what, what I am trying to do is assign pollen samples samples of pollen. <laughs> I mean, I have a data from uh, pollen composition with the different species that we can found within a sample. And what we try to do is identify what type of vegetation belongs to that uh, sample. And it could be like defined as a classification analysis. And for that, I use a formula to estimate the um, likelihood that that samples belong to each one of the different types of vegetation. So, uh, but as you mentioned, for is similar because for that we set a threshold where we uh, define whether or not the sample belongs to each one of the biomes. And at the end, um, we allocate the sample to the biome or that type of vegetation most likely to belong. And after that, I mean, I mean, we initially we do that with a uh, known data set in order to evaluate the accuracy of our test or our analysis in the same, in the way that uh, we can identify, uh, as you uh, explained here, how many correct allocations we did and how. Uh, how many misallocations we, we obtain. So I think this hypothesis testing is quite similar to the analysis uh, I am running. But as such, I have very few experience beyond my uh, bachelor because of my research. Yeah, but I thought this discussion is the very short. It's basically an approach that everyone using the research you are using a body testing. Now we are here using the deep test 
to have a look at this p value, okay, what's happened in the um, that in itself the hypothesis test uh, uh, approach uh, it uh, which uh, when you make an hypothesis, okay, you all you, any any time is is done all the time. Because you, even when you are searching, if your values are within a certain uh, range, you are doing hypothesis testing. Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm looking at that uh, if my value is within a certain range of values. Yeah. Then there are some. I'm not some yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm, uh, um, I mean, it can be confusing because sometimes there is a, like something that you have to do. Um, in, in, when you do research, then you can do whatever you like. Okay, so basically, your hypothesis, your new hypothesis, you set the hypothesis to be. Uh, whatever you like, you set a, a threshold which is not 50%, which is not 20%, which, which is not 0 0.01 or 1%. You set it to whatever you like, and then you set a threshold for the p value, and that, that threshold for the p value needs to be because you are looking at the chaos, okay? So that that will need to be uh, uh, within a set of specified value because it's at the chaos. Okay, so you you have a, distrib a distribution probability, and at this distribution is hundred percent of value. So all all your all the values are within this distribution. Distribution um, is hundred percent. If you want to have a look at the chaos because those values that fall within the chaos are the, the extreme events. Right. And those are the ones you want to catch. Yeah. So then you run a yeah. test, which is two sided test or one sided test. It depends by what range you want to identify. Because usually, if you simulate your data many times, mm -hmm. most of the time you you have a normal distribution of your simulated data. Right. For the uh, central limit theory, the mean of this simulated uh, data will be closer to your your population mean, and so uh, the the the. If if you have like a couple of minutes, because now it's uh, a whole hour, but if you have a couple of minutes, I can show you quickly what I am doing now. Yeah, I've I've got uh, uh yes yes um just um, yeah. um, oh, okay so this is what I'm so the 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 mean value would be at the very center of this field okay so this is a, mm -hmm. then you're looking at values which are far uh farther from from this uh mean value it, though those will be uh, the anomalous values so the very extreme values that you want to address in case or ever look at because in general you find what's happened but then some extreme events can influence your results so you want to have a look at that no i, I stop sharing so you can show yeah because uh Thinking in what you are saying, it could be considered 
the yeah I am doing hypothesis testing. Yeah, um, what I am doing currently is I have where is this here? Uh, here. Uh, I have samples of pollen all over Europe, modern samples, and um, each sample belongs to different types of vegetation. So what I want to do as the very final goal is to identify in fossil pollen samples uh, what was the type of vegetation in the past. But for that, I am training or using a modern uh, data set, I mean, where we know what is the type of vegetation of each uh, type of sample, pollen sample. So, and, and then here's the, well, what I, what I have is that I group all these the pollen samples that belong to a type of vegetation to get um to get a mean and a mean and standard deviation value for the different species uh, within the vegetation type. Uh, let's say, for example, the coniferous forest have a uh, mean and standard deviations abundance of this species and yeah the same with the different species and then i have a i have a unique or a individual pollen sample uh, and i use a dissimilarity measure which is here where i estimate where is the let's say the distance or the likelihood of the pollen sample to belong to each one of the different biomes. Uh, if you see, let me, if you see this uh, formula, consider the pollen, the percentage of the species or the taxon in the sample, uh, subtracting the mean uh, in the vegetation type. And also consider the standard uh, deviation. Of the taxa within the, the biome. And yeah, we have a parameter here for making the absent uh, species to add a uh, weight into the formula. And after that, here we have, we assign the samples to the most uh, likely, likely biome. But let me show you. Ah, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we convert the all the the obtained values or the whole range of values to similarity scores. And let me see the. Uh, where is the, the supplementary? Um, yeah. Where is it? here should be the supplementary. Um, mm -mm. Good. Yeah, when we convert the whole range of values from, uh, I mean, just in this step, we just are inverting the values because with this formula, we should assign the sample to the vegetation type with the most small, smallest value. And when we convert to similarity scores, what we are doing is uh, assigning the sample with the highest or yeah, the highest value. And when we obtain here is, we see, no, 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 no. Ah, here is. When we get here, 
is the similarity scores, for example, for one type of vegetation. We have a, uh, the samples have this range. I mean, the samples have this range of values for the, I mean, again, the samples that belong to gram have this range of values for gram and this range of values for, let's say, EM, WD, and yeah, this range of values for uh, cool mixed forest, um, so, so on. And the cool mixed forest samples have this range of values for uh, this type of vegetation, and it's different for each one of the vegetation types. So, and then what, what we uh, did is, establishing a threshold value using an, an ROC curve that uh, give us a yeah exactly yeah, and here we got a good point where that is saying where we cannot differentiate, for example, gram for any other uh, type of vegetation. Let's say zero point is very, very close to here, like here. From here, uh, I mean, all the smallest values or the values below this uh, threshold cannot be, I mean, we cannot consider them as having a probability of belonging to a uh, gram. And it, with this threshold, we have a certain degree of cer certainty that we have a sample that is likely to be, to belong to the modern uh, spectra. And yeah, we assign, simply assign the sample to the uh, type of vegetation with the highest uh, value. Yeah, here is the, again, the, the, uh, the threshold analysis. And yeah, it's basically what we are doing. Finally, we evaluate the accuracy using this confusion or, yeah, confusion matrix for get, for observing how many correct uh, assignations we, we did and how many misallocations we have. Um, it's visually, it's basically what 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 uh, I am working with so far. But I thought on this because you mentioned that, like, I mean, doing research is flexible. But if we apply the same principles of the hypothesis testing, it could be considered as as such as an, as an hypothesis uh, testing. But yes. Uh, 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 your new hypothesis and your attempt of hypothesis based on Uh, then when you conclude, you say that that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's your your starting point is that, and it is a laboratory. Any time is uh. <laughs> Okay, very interesting. But can you share the article in the link or something? Yeah, sure. Let me share your, this link. What do you use for uh, um, for making the map? I use uh, the um, for doing the relief. I am using. 
are natural natural air data. Do you know okay. it? And here I can I mean I can share you the code if okay. you wish. And for all the other just basic ggplot. Um, yeah, I am just using ggplot. The th the only thing is that I got the raster of the vegetation types was previously made uh, by other colleagues. So they did that map based on machine uh, learning. So, and I am using their raster for creating this map with the vegetation types all over Europe. And the relief map I did it with using data from our natural air. So yeah, basically it's all with, with ggplot. All my figures are ggplot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that would be fantastic if you can share the code. I think we should, uh, it's 12 past. I'm not I sure. yet. Um, are the <laughs> good club to learn at this day. Next time. Okay. But thank you very much. That was brilliant. So I'll have a look at this thing because I'm uh, actually very interested. And uh, maybe you can share the code on Slack with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm good. Good stuff.